Hi, I'm Kathleen, and today I'm going to share all of my favorite places to thrift in Japan. Let's get into it. That's right, I took my thrifting addiction across country lines, and I made it Japan's problem too. First things first, I had four items on my to thrift list for this trip. A low cropped sweater to wear over button up shirts, so essential, and high waisted cargo pants. Also a hat and some cute vintage home goods. So let's rewind about a month and take a hop, skip, and a jump to Tokyo. Our first stop is a secondhand store called Kindle. There are lots of Kindle locations across Japan and they're basically fancy consignment stores. This location is in Ginza, so heavy emphasis on the fancy. And after tromping up some stairs, we enter a cozy corridor filled with designer clothing and unique pieces from recognizable brands. One thing that I really appreciated about the style in Japan is people really embrace the unique details and one-of-a-kind items. Of course, most of them were way out of my price range, but hey, it's always fun to look. I ended up finding this Lil Sweater tank that laced up the back and had big dirndl vibes. Needless to say, I loved it. Perfect for layering, and I had to try it on. Editing this video, I see so many items that I regret not picking up, like this Tokyo Sky Tree tote and this Kelly Green floor length dress. Like, come on, what was I doing? However, I will say that I was trying to be exceedingly picky, maybe to a fault. And next time, maybe I'll be a little less picky and a little more impulsive. Loved these tabby slip-ons. You most often see people rocking the tabby heeled boots, but there are so many more options, people. Open your minds. Spread your toes and open your minds. Okay, in Japanese fitting rooms, you usually have to take off your shoes. For example, you'd take your shoes off and step onto the brown carpet, but I'm just going to keep them on and keep off the carpet since I'm only trying on a shirt. Was that unnecessary to tell you? I don't know. I think it's a fun little detail. A fun little fact. Okay, got the goods, and of course, there was a six-story Muji right next door, so we have to go in. We have to. If you've never been to a Muji, it's like a department store, but, uh, nice. Like an extremely calming Japanese Ikea. This one had a tea blending service, which is extremely my thing. But we all know that you come to Muji for the stationery section. These pins, though, if you know, you know. So good. Alright, on to our next stop. Today we head to the coastal town of Kamakura. Kamakura is known for seafood, especially these little fish. So many eyeballs. I was not a huge fan of these little guys. And amazing views of Mount Fuji. This was my first time in Kamakura and I, I'll admit it, I fell in love. It's about an hour and a half outside of Tokyo and I definitely recommend it for a day trip. Anyways, I of course scoped out the local vintage scene and I was not disappointed. This shop is called Chapter Vintage, I think, and it's so very toot. It was the best curated collection I saw during my trip. Cozy, comforting, folksy. The prices were reasonable too for vintage that was in such beautiful condition. Also, the gal who worked there was super nice and she told me my Japanese was good, so obviously, I stand. Tokyo for another night of secondhand shopping. This time we're checking out a chain of stores called Second Street. Hi, we're currently heading to one of my favorite thrift chains called Second Street. They have them in a lot of big cities like Kyoto and Tokyo. And we're currently sorry, I'm lost. <laughs> and we're currently heading to the Shinjuku location. Never been there, so let's go together. Onward.
First, I wandered in and was confused by the lack of women's clothing. And then I read a sign that said there was actually another location a block down the road. So let's pop over there. Second Street has a similar vibe to Kindle, the first store we went to, in that there's a lot of higher end and unique pieces at a higher price point. But this location had like five floors and each floor had a different theme, so there were definitely options to be found for all different price points. I loved this little Dior boxy number, but Dark Kermit did not get his way, and I successfully stopped myself from dropping a thousand dollars on it. I know, what a feat of mental fortitude. where things get interesting. I'll let Japan Kathleen take it from here. Hi, it's me. We are about an hour outside of Osaka today at Sinan Long Park, specifically because there's a skate park here. I just dropped off Gus to do some skating and guess what I walked by? Yeah, a huge thrift store. Can you believe it? Thrift gods. I'm their favorite alkalite. Let's go check it out. There are ominous drums ahead of me. Seems like a good sign. All right, y'all, welcome to my windswept hair and to Kenji. I'm not sure if this is a chain in Japan, but it kind of has the feeling that it might be. And I'm also not sure if all of these dry cleaned items are everything that they get in stock. Wouldn't that be wild if they cleaned everything? American thrift stores could never. But maybe this is just their like super nice stuff that they sell online. In any case, I already got some corduroys and a sweatshirt for Gus. Look at this thing. Not sure who this guy is, but I like him. I think I found a little designer section. It's like $17. Wow. I've seen a lot of MCM here so far. This is incredible. That's a nice price. No biggie. And FedEx? <laughs> Ooh. Dior pants. <laughs> so cheap. These look like they might actually fit me. Yeah, okay, I'll say it. This is my favorite secondhand store I've been to in Japan. The prices were awesome. There was a huge selection of contemporary and vintage items from Japan and worldwide. It is a little off the beaten track, so make a day of it. Go check out the beach, grab some food from the ginormous mall food court across the street, and then spend your afternoon digging through the racks at Kenji. What could be better? Oh my gosh, I'm in bag heaven. Look at all these. Ah, I don't think I've ever seen a Fjall Raven at a thrift store before. Well, I guess this isn't really a thrift store. It's more like a Buffalo Exchange, Plato's Closet, that kind of vibe. This is fun, and it's so cheap. Ooh, exciting. 
Sports. Why am I such a simp for a black bag? It's my fatal flaw. Ooh. I thought maybe I actually stumbled across some Chanel. Shadorian. <laughs> this is cool. Great texture. Ooh, another one. Oh, what's this? Okay, cute. I like the little scoopy bottom. Again, so cheap. Do we like? I'm, I'm very sorry about this. I promise you it's worse for me than it is for you. <laughs> Who wants to match? That's better. This little tiny mini duffel is very toot. It's virtually free. God, if these are under a hundred dollars in my size, I am gonna get them. Nope. Okay, luckily they're like a half size too small, but now I know what Doc Martens I have to be out on the lookout for. These are amazing. This seems like the vintage section. Like this might be where I can actually find some vintage Japanese stuff. Cross your fingers for me. This is kind of amazing. I do love Mount Fuji. It's like a golf jacket. Maybe Gus would like this. This chore coat is so beautiful, complete with four pockets for all your treats and trinkets. Same. Also same. Have you ever seen a more cartoony skirt? This is adorable and tiny, but adorable. Wait, I think there's a shirt that goes with this. It is a whole look. Are these the cargo pants of my dreams? They seem like they might fit. Let's try them. This is also kind of amazing. Cargo skirt. Would I wear it though? Maybe. Okay, two bangers back to back. Does this remind anyone of anything? <laughs> you have a very full little basket. I think it might be time to go try stuff on. Okay, we're in. Let's try some stuff on. Pew. Uh, yeah, no. This dress is okay, a little tight, and I think this is supposed to be a belt, but it is much too small. Let's try something else. This is interesting. I think it's supposed to be like a top layer. There's little belt loops and it's just a single button. This could be a cool little layering piece. Hmm. Speaking of layering pieces, this is cool. I'm into this. Also, fun fact, you're supposed to put like a paper bag over your head when you're trying stuff on if you're wearing a bunch of makeup so you don't get the makeup on the clothes. Cool, huh? And this little velvet vest is cool. It's got like little crochet inserts. I just can't tell if this sticking out means it's too big or too small. Again, fun layering piece. But how many layering pieces do I need? I don't like that question. You guys. These dickies are exactly what I've been looking for. They're so high-waisted, got the little carpenter loop on them. Wide legs. I'm having a struggle. I'm also getting these. Yes. From here, I didn't thrift for a couple days, so I'm gonna speed run us through Hiroshima and Kyoto and get back to Tokyo. Hiroshima was incredible, and it was my favorite place that we visited by far. We spent one night at a ryokan on Miyajima Island as a belated birthday gift for me. He's gonna come get you. <laughs> Thank you. 
another day just exploring Hiroshima city proper. If you're ever able to visit Hiroshima, please make a point to visit the Peace Memorial Museum. I can honestly say that it was life-changing and really, really important for all humans. We also spent the evening at an Odin bar called Ahui that we just randomly stumbled into. And we were making friends and we watched One Piece and somehow my YouTube videos ended up on the projector screen, which was uh, an experience. And an amazing local artist gave us a painting as a souvenir. So really can't recommend Hiroshima in the bar enough. If you go, tell Kengo we said hi. Anyways, after Hiroshima, I didn't get to do much more thrifting on the trip, but we did get to stop in some mom and pop thrift stores called Recycle Shops, and they are amazing. Here's the hottest tip I can offer you. At the end of your Japan trip, don't go to Don Quixote to get your cheesy souvenirs. Go here, go to a recycle shop. You can get one of a kind vintage gifts for a steal. You're supporting local businesses, and honestly, this is where you find the best stuff. Hello, clown thermostat. Of course I'm getting that. May I sit with you? I'm back. Or more accurately, we are back to the present day. And that can only mean one thing. It's haul time, baby. In this bag, I have all of the secondhand goodies and souvenirs that I brought home from Japan. That sounded like a fart, sir. And let's start from the beginning. Remember at the start of this video where I said my wish list consisted of a low crop sweater and high-waisted cargo pants? Let's check that first item off the list. I bought this at the Kindle in Ginza, and I think it's just perfect for wintertime in Ohio. I think my favorite detail is that it laces up the back, which was great because being a Westerner, a lot of the clothing did not fit me, so when you can get any kind of customization on your garments that allow it to be bigger or smaller, that's always a plus. Moving on, and let's talk about these high-waisted cargo pants that I found. I can't believe I fished what I wished for my wish list. I had no hopes. I wasn't even gonna look through the pants because I was like, mm, probably not gonna fit. And I saw these and this juicy little hammer hook. What are these called? Carpenter loop. These are made even more special because it's actually a collaboration between Dickies and a Japanese brand called Nico and. I'm not able to find these anywhere online, so I think they're pretty rare and were probably pretty expensive new. So I got really lucky. I am obsessed with these. They're the highest waisted pants that I have. They go up to the Grand Tetons. And I am so thankful. If I had only found these while I was thrifting, I would have been happy. Thank you, thrift gods. All right, I didn't show this during the thrifting portion either. Gus actually found this shirt for me. One thing that I'm always looking for when I'm thrifting in Japan, like I do it all the time, it's literally my second time I've ever done it, is Japanese graphic tees. They're really hard to find. As you saw in last week's video, it's mostly just American graphic tees. But Gus was able to find this Japanese Santa Cruz long sleeve, which is so cool. It's the Japanese version of one of these. It even has the arm hit, a nice big back graphic, and I feel like a cool little e-boy when I wear this. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about Hiroshima. So I didn't get to go thrifting in Hiroshima, but I did get to go to that bar that I mentioned. And also, as I mentioned, one of those new friends was an artist, and he sent us home with a painting. So sweet. Is this not the best souvenir you could possibly ask for? A symbol of friendship. So this painting is by Miyamoto-san. I'll put his Instagram down in the description if you want to go check him out. And I can't wait to hang this up. I'll probably thrift a new frame for it, just because this one got a little bit beat up, stuffed into my suitcase on the way home. Sorry. So we'll thrift one and it'll be perfect. So cool. So the rest of the stuff that I got is all from recycle shops. This is where you find the treasure. So there was one actually in Akihabara area of Tokyo. I got a cute little linen apron. And before you say that's boring, I like to call it functional, and it was like a dollar. All right, and the rest of the stuff is from a recycle shop in Kyoto that I actually made a reel about. So if you wanna follow me on Instagram, you can do that at Kathleen Illustrated. And this store was so cute. It was run by this older lady and who I'm assuming was her husband. Didn't speak any English, but when I found this, I saw it and I immediately thought, is that Kappa, my favorite waterfall friend? So I went up to her and I'm like, Kappa desu ka? 
this is Kappa. And then she tried to explain who it was. It's a different mythological beast. She thought it was a Tengu or like um, a minion of a Tengu. I had to get it because we put so much work into figuring out who this little guy is. And while I was looking at the little amulets and medallions and trinkets and tchotchkes, I also saw this friend. Another minion, which now that I look a little bit closer, that hair looks extremely realistic. Love the pants, love the fit, and I thought this would be a cute little ornament, or even put it on a purse, perhaps? Wouldn't that be so cute? Also, we were looking for a housewarming gift for a family member, so we ended up picking up these two beautiful wooden saucers. I think they're actually from Scandinavia somewhere. And we also got a little vintage scarf to wrap the gift up in. And finally, one last souvenir for me. Are you ready? Of course, my clown radar was going off and I sniffed it out and I knew I had to have it. I think it was around 700 yen, so like $5. And slowly my house is becoming a clown core circus tent and there's nothing you can do about it. So that is all of the secondhand treasure that I found at Japan. I did my best to save all of the addresses for the locations that I showed in this video. So if you wanna check out the description box, you can get the Google Maps locations for them. And y'all, I have to say this month, we have some exciting videos coming up. For example, next week, a company is letting me paint on their $500 designer purse. The stakes are very high and there will be a giveaway. So you should definitely come back for that if you'd like to come back again soon. Make sure that you subscribe if you'd like. I would really appreciate it. I think we've had a lot of fun here today. Also later this month, I'm gonna be hosting a live auction of clothing from my own personal collection. So there's a lot of goodness and fun to be had this month. If you wanna keep this party going for now, you can always watch last week's video, which was also a thrifting in Japan video or check out my Thrifty Finds playlist. There are 60 videos in there now, I think. So I hope you have a great week. I love you and goodbye.